giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome! It's the second week of competition and we're seeing this game evolve already as more and more teams take the field for their first and even some second place. This week we've got some upsets, some surprises, and lots of defense. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. I'm Ben. And I'm Connor. And I'm in a hotel room, so that's why <laughs> I have no video today. <laughs> so... Let's get straight into it. Let's talk about 2791. Um, I mean, the New York Tech Valley Regional. Uh, from practice day moving forward, we saw about three groupings of teams. 2791, the first group. Um, after that, a group of pretty good offensive robots. And the last group, teams that weren't really finished with what they were working on, who turned to defense. Um, almost every single match, there was at least one defender robot on each side of the field, and that was within the first 10 qualification matches. Um, you could see pinning counts being thrown out by the refs every match. It was kind of crazy. So that was the scene for this regional. Now let's talk about 2791. By the end of the first day, they had gained four rocket rank points, half of those by themselves, a rank score of 3.25 doing an average of 10 cycles a match with a max of 13, which, for reference, the next closest team at the event was doing an average of six cycles per match, and a choice to make the next day as the predicted first seed. However, Saturday morning, they lost two matches in a row uh, because they lost comms in one and they weren't functioning properly in another, uh, which led team number 2020 to seed first and select Shaker for eliminations. Now, this alliance was nothing to sneeze at, but let's talk about the second and sixth seeds and that really close semifinal set. So the third seed turned second, te second seed captain, 694, Stipulse, had this absolutely killer machine. They've got this suction cup climb, a drifty omni drivetrain, and they really just needed some time to warm up on it. So they're the second seed. They selected last year's TVR upset winning little switchbot champ, team 1493, now, 1493 had basically the same teleop output as 20 at this event. Uh, they just had a level two climb instead of a three, which 694 didn't need because they already had theirs. So semifinals comes around and it's the sixth seed that pulled through two quarters, grabbing an absolute steal of a team, uh, 514 Miller Place Robotics, honestly one of the best hatch panel robots there in my opinion. So we've got these two really evenly matched alliances in semis, 2v6. So so even that the first match scores a tie where blue six seed took it by just a smidge of a pinning foul. So next match, uh, red takes by 10 points convincingly next match. After that blue comes out swinging, they send team 250 the dynamos out on defense. Unfortunately, uh, the first interaction of that left team 1493 sprawled out on the field tipped over. Now, 694 knows that 1493 is the main scorer on that alliance, but the match just got that much closer. 694 tried to write them to no avail, but it was really the power of an absolute steal of an every bot third pick 7030 that won the match for them. You could really feel the entire arena cheering for the Red Alliance, cheering 694 and 7030 on, uh, hoping that they could either lift 1493 up or win without them, and it was incredible. They did. They took the match. And so they moved on to finals. Now, for an event with so much defense, our finals matches were kind of a breath of offensive relief. Uh, the first match was a close one, 90 to 88 two-point difference, with the Red Alliance taking it. And a second match would lock in the winning alliance, 27-91, 20, and rookie team 76-51. 
Also, congrats go out to Team 3044 on a well-deserved chairman's uh, absolutely uh, great team. Congratulations to them. So now moving on to the Southeast Mass District event. It wouldn't be an FRC event if everything worked properly. Yet yeah, the pits, yes, the pits, lost power for a few minutes, surprisingly. And what was also surprising is that there wasn't any chaos, which there wasn't any chaos because they just weren't competing this week. Uh, <laughs> so now we, uh, we had some really interesting play throughout the competition. We had some teams break out this weekend that really shook up the field and the way everything seated, such as 69 Hyper, 58, 46, I believe those are the Wirecats, 7, 172 Northern Force, and 173 Rage Robotics. Alliance selection went really smoothly with no declines. The number one seed pick, which was 78 Airstrike, picked up the number three seed, 2168 Aluminum Falcons, and their second pick was 2523 Tech Storm. Moving into the quarterfinals, the number one seed used their timeout before their first match. We'll probably never know why they actually used it then, but it didn't really matter anyway because it paid off for them in, in, in the quarterfinals, and they went 2-0, and where they eventually went against the number four seed in the semifinals, which was made up of 32-36 Triforce, 28-77 Lagerbots, and 32-05 Patriots. Once again, the number one seed won 2-0, and advancing to the finals, where they met the number three seed of 69 Hyper, 88 TJ squared, and 58-13 Morpheus. Both alliances battled it out in a best of three series. The score was neck and neck, but the number one seed ended up winning the event, even though 78 fell during their level three hab climb. The number one seed only won, won by just a mere smidge of 10 points. That's right, number one seed went undefeated through the, through the elimination tournament. During the award ceremony, team 125, the Neutrons, they picked up their eighth chairman's award. That's a lot of chairman's awards, guys. And 78 Airstrike, they picked up their fourth engineering inspiration award. So congratulations to all the teams that competed at Southeast this past weekend. And now chat, let's get some gold and silver cling bling for team 78. All right. Thanks, Connor. So I'm going to go on and we're going to talk about Mount Olive for this week. It, between the two FMA events that happened this weekend, it was definitely the one with more star power. We had many big FMA teams at this event. We had 2590 Nemesis, 1923, the Midnight Inventors, 25 Raider Robotics, three-time uh, winner of events last year, 222, uh, the Tigertrons, and 303, the Test Team, also a three-time winner last year. Almost all didn't have their level three climbs working yet, or they had issues with their level three climbs. But um, ultimately, this let other robots with more consistent level three climbs end up in the top of the rankings, like 5992 and 2577. So uh, a couple interesting things from this event. 1923 had suction cups on their robot early in the event. They moved their forks, and they replaced them with suction cups, similar to 694. But they had a couple technical issues through there, so they swapped them out. Uh, to remove for the event. That way they could make their elevator move faster for the event, but look for them to have those uh, up to date and better for future comps. So 5992 captured the top spot. They uh, selected the three time 2018 winner 303 as their first pick, and they picked up uh, 1279 Cold Fusion on the backside. So uh, 2577 Pingree Robotics, they ended up seeding second. Also, they had a level three climb picking 222 as their first pick. And there's an everybot, uh, 6943, the Blue Bears, as their second pick on the backside. There were two other high-powered alliances there. We had uh, 2590, Nemesis, and 25 Red Robotics paired together on Alliance 3. 25 is one of the fastest robots I've seen at Hatches all game. Anyone who hasn't checked that out, please, you know, just go do it. It's They're very good at Hatches. Um, but there were no level three climbs in that alliance. 1923 picked up a level three climb and fast low cycler 1257 parallel universe on the Alliance four side to make the fourth really powerful Alliance. So alliances one, two, three, and four moved to the semis. They basically moved straight through their quarterfinals uh, and their one and two took down three and four, both because they had better climbs and more scoring power overall. In the one versus two finals, we saw uh, 6943, six, they went to go play defense versus the primarily scoring role that they had before. 
And Alliance 2 took down Alliance 1 in two matches, winning the second match 73 to 67. 1403 took home the Chairman's Award. Congrats to them. Moving over to the Waterbury District event in Connecticut, we had two teams that came from the Mid Atlantic. We had Team 1676, the Pascac Pioneers, and 3314, Mechanical Mustangs. Now, nothing about this event was relatively unusual. All the notable teams at this event seat played well, and they seeded very well. 176, Aces High, they ended up as the number one seed, where they picked up the number three seed, 177, Bobcat Robotics. They breezed through the quarters and semis, where they lost against the number two seed alliance, made up of 1676, Pascac, 230, the Gale Hawks, and 3654, Tech Tigers. 1071 Max won their third Chairman's Award, and 4557 Full Metal Falcons won their third Engineering Inspiration Award. Congratulations to all the teams that competed at Waterbury. So I'm going to briefly recap Westtown for everyone here as well. It's the other MAR event that was going on, a little bit less star power than uh, Mount Olive, but still very competitive event. Uh, 1391 was playing back-to-back -back weeks there. Uh, we also saw 4454, the Hatboro winner from last week, competed, where they uh, lost in, however, they lost in the quarters this weekend. Many of FMA's players that are traditionally good at early events, like 4342, were there. Uh, 4342, 5407, 834, they're all very traditionally good at these early events, and they didn't disappoint this weekend. Uh, many of the regular suspects who you see uh, improve over the course of the season and really dominate at Marchamp struggled more in qualification rounds, and they ended up getting picked up by these by these other teams. We saw 1712 Dogma, 1640 Sabotage, 365 Mo, and 341 Miss Daisy. So 5404, that's the Giraffes seated first. They picked 5420 Velocity to their alliance. They were knocked out in the semis by Alliance 4, consisting of uh, 272 Cyber Crusaders, 433 the Firebirds, and 3929 Atomic Dragons. Uh, 1640, interestingly, was picked uh, as the first robot to the by the number two captain, 4342 Demon, from the 27 seed, so all the way from 27 to the second pick, at a slightly over 30 team event. It's pretty crazy. It was, ended up being a good pick because they went on to win, but... Um, they also joined by 2191 Flux Corps, where they made it to the finals uh, to ultimately defeat the number four seed alliance. In uh, finals one, there's some interesting stuff here. 3929's climber appeared to have what fallen through the bottom of the bot, and 1168 was called in as a backup bot for them. You know, unfortunately, they weren't able to pull it through with that. In finals two, uh, 4342 fell off Hab 2, and Tyler's pulling up some photos here. He's got a photo of 3929 and also a, four, a photo of uh, 433 where he's going to show some of the uh, Hab 3 issues with that. 272 won the Engineering Inspiration Award, besides being a finalist, so double silver cling bling for them and double gold cling bling for 1640 for being both chairmans and winner of the event. So moving on, we've got a, a little bit of a discussion that we want to cover here. We, we are starting to see more Team Solo the Rocket. We saw 2791 solo rockets consistently. Will, do we think other teams will be able to solo more rockets here? Will we see teams get better? So, you know, well, going into the season, we all knew that playing a rocket was going to be no easy task. I think we can all agree on that. However, based on the past two weeks, I think it seems a little bit more reasonable than, than we all thought. Uh, I bet that we will definitely be seeing 195 soloing rockets, whether if it's at their second event, I personally don't see them soloing at their first event. And that's based upon their previous history. They usually have a little bit of a slow start, but in the end, they're pretty much better than all of us. Um, so I, my, my bet is definitely on 195 there. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, just seeing things at the beginning of the season, um, we don't always see teams going for sort of the high scoring type things. 2791, um, the outlier here, they have a seasoned driver. Um, he went through a season last year with a very similar robots and knows how to get that kind of robot to just go far enough. Um, and kind of as we progress through this game, we're going to see a lot more drivers become familiar with the 
capabilities of the robot and how far they can push themselves to get that rocket ranking point. Um, in New York, I think that we're probably going to see some teams uh, do it besides 2791. Uh, just predictions for that. Uh, 340, 694, uh, 3015, and possibly even 20. Yeah, I agree with, with both of you. I think that this is going to become more and more common. I actually have a, a Ben on the Mar Discord that we're going to see maybe 15% of teams at the event, or, or no, in Mar, basically. Maybe it's debatable, but able to solo <laughs> rockets. <laughs> um, you know, there it, it's it's going to be a lot more common than, than people thought initially going into the season because teams always get so much better here. Um, some of the robots, I think, are going to be capable of it here. 222, 1640, 1923, 1676. Um, and obviously, the the New, so the New York teams that we mentioned already, I think 2168s coming down to Springside Chestnut Hill this next weekend. I think they might even do it as soon as next weekend. Who knows? Um, we got 195, obviously, that we talked about. A uh, whole bunch of New, New England teams um historically and uh i've seen footage of 225 do it so i, I assume that's probably going to happen nice all right so next we're going to be moving into the frc top 25 predictions for the northeast region so I believe all, all right, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think uh, I think twenty. If twenty seven ninety one isn't super high on the predictions, uh, or in the FRC twenty five, I'll be a little bit disappointed. They're probably the the third best robot that has you know shown their face here yet. So I, they're they're extremely good, and I applaud them for having something quite as powerful as they have at this stage in the game here. Now, uh, I, have, I have to talk about, too, uh, 222 is probably the best robot in FMA right now. It's unfortunate that we don't see them as much on the, uh, the Nor'eastern uh, top 10. I'm, I'm really sad about that. But uh, they had a dynamite robot this weekend, able to score at their peak 10 or 11 game pieces a match. So it, it's, it's really too bad that they're not on there. And I hope that they get some more press as the days go on. This is the best robot that they've had in years. I'd just like to second 2791 there. They were absolutely fantastic at Tech Valley. Um, looking forward to seeing them perform at Central New York, especially among uh, so many of the big names there. I'm going to have to go with uh, 2168, the Aluminum Falcons. You know, they just keep getting better and better each year, and I, I see them making it into the 25. And going beyond, they'll, they're just going to get better and better as the season goes on, so... We need to watch out for them, for sure. All right. So moving into next week's previews, we have six weeks, uh, six events next week in the Northeast. So let's look forward to what we might be seeing next weekend. Uh, to cover, there are two happening in FMA. We've got Bridgewater Rar Raritan. This is 303's home turf. They were the number one pick this weekend. Look for them to be super strong. Uh, 56 is debuting for the first time. They had a really good robot last year. They were the uh, number one seed on their division, made it all the way to the finals. Um, it, it's one of those FMA teams that's not really talked about that much that is very good uh, historically. So keep an eye out for 56. Um, and we've got 1676 fresh off the New England win. So expect them to come and make a very strong soaring at Bridgewater Raritan. It's going to be a very great event. Springside Chestnut Hill is Mars' smallest event, but it's also very deep. All the events on the PA side tend to be go a little bit deeper, and even on the 24th pick, you really get a robot that usually is quite good. Um, this is 1218's home turf. Uh, expect them to have a much stronger showing than they had at Hatboro Horse. And they've often had, uh, if you look historically, they sometimes have a first event where they don't do quite as well, and they're very good at picking it up and fixing their issues. We got 2168 coming down, who number one pick at their event at Southwest Mass this past weekend. And so they're going to be really, really strong here coming into another event. 25, yeah, 2539 is number one pick, or, or excuse me, number one seed at uh, Hatboro Horsham, 103, really good at Hatboro Horsham, 225 is debuting. And 
5404 is the number one seed at West Town. So we got all these great robots in a 31 team event. It's going to be great. So moving into the Southern New Hampshire district event, uh, this is the same time, this is the same town that Dean Kamen resides in, Bedford, New Hampshire. This event features 38 teams from five of the New England states with some notables as 131, 133, 319. Uh, no, no, this is gonna show a little bit of my bias here, but 166. Uh, 131 competed week one. Uh, they have a really decent robot uh, starting the season off with 27 district points. 133, uh, they, this will be their debut event. They released a practice video a few weeks ago that looks very impressive. They have a really fast level three hab climber, although the hatch panel manipulator looks kind of wonky. I'm sure they'll have no problems. And this year, they're going all out with the powder coating. They powdered their robot green. 319 took a visit to Marla week one with a pretty interesting design. They are part of team handoff with a fe featuring an aerial assist style intake that feeds into an MCC 2018 style shooter on their elevator. So good luck to all the teams that will be competing at Southern New Hampshire. I will be drive coaching 166 that weekend. And if you wanna say hi uh, to me, feel free to do so. All right, so Central New York and FLR. Central New York, just gonna say some team numbers here because there are some big names coming. We got 125, 195, 694, 2590, 2791, 145, captain of the semifinalist, six seed at TVR, 229, third seed captain and finalist at Montreal, 36, 24, the magic bucket, 639, who has an awesome robot, which is going to be a fun event. Bring your sunglasses, because even though the sun won't be out, this event will be a star. Let's go Finger Lakes. We've got 217 coming all the way from Michigan, thundering in. We've got 340, 1507, 1511, 3015, 5254. We'll see how many rockets we can get to take flight at this event, uh, even though the snow and sleet that's currently projected in the forecast might hinder that. Thank you to everyone who has watched. Uh, on behalf of myself, Connor, Ben, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our mods in chat. Our next show is the Sweet Tea Recap, but before that, we're going to be looking behind the bumpers with Team 709, Femtech Fatale, who competed week one. Stick around, and we'll talk to you next week Next week on Nor'easter Region, Re Region Recap. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.